Hello my soccer universe, La Liga is kicking off this Friday for the 23-24 season and so I thought it's time for a little review. And the first thing that you will notice is of course that La Liga has a new branding and especially a new logo, one that will take a lot of time to get used to. And just by seeing it by itself with the double L that kind of looks like hooks, not sure I'm sold on it uh, to be honest, but hey. It will develop, we all will miss the rainbow a rainbow logo, but hey, it is they need it have a more modern image, a little bit more red, a little bit more Spanish, but I actually think uh, the Premier League has done in that sense a much better job and so did for instance Serie A and I believe argue the Bundesliga and League, um, but that's so far for me. Uh, the transfer summer has been relatively quiet, especially outside of the big two, namely Real Madrid and Barcelona. Uh, Real Madrid, of course, has got the major signing in with uh, Jude Bellingham joining. Looking like the midfield uh, is completely revamped. Of course, you lost Benzema, who, so uh, attacking up front is probably a little bit light. You got in Brahim Diaz, but overall, um, Real Madrid seems to be very well set for the future. I'm not quite sure about this season, because it is really glaring that you need a guy up front, because Joselo is not going to do the job for you that Karim Benzema has been doing. And yes. You have with Vinny Jr. Arg, arguably the best player of the last season. Some might argue the best player in the world right now. But is it enough uh, to do so? On the other side, Barcelona. Yes, they might lose uh, Dembele right now. Um, he made a real king signing also with Ilka Gündoğan. That's the captain of the Champions League winning team. Uh, which I could see is, might work quite well for Barca, you know, uh, he knows also Lewandowski, so there, I can see that this will, could work. Um, overall, the one thing for Barca that I have to say though is they will not be playing at the camp now, which is currently being more or less demolished and they have to play up at the Olympic Stadium at the Montjuic. Great location, not so great stadium. To be honest, but hey, I saw the pictures today. They made it nicer, but it's all—it's more or less half the capacity for the camp now. Was so uh, that's gonna be curious, and it has the running track. So in that sense, I'm not so sure about that. Given all that, and given how Barca—I mean, much maligned season last time around because Barca were never convincing. I think of all the championships that I have ever seen Barca win uh, during my lifetime as a soccer, soccer man. This was the least convincing one. It was more, as I said, Barca Nacho. 1-0, 1-0, However, given that they still had a sizable difference to Real Madrid, you might have to say that uh, they may as well win this. They had 1-2. Given that I think the lack up front is the bigger one. Of course, there's one wild card, and that wild card comes from France, where we know the big drama around Kylian Mbappe, who says he wants to fulfill his contract at PSG and then leave on a free and he's not extending it. Um, and PSG is saying, no, either you extend or you're not playing. And there are not many landing spots and Real Madrid at the moment is watching this from a distance. I could very well see that Kylian Mbappé might go there. If Kylian goes to Real Madrid, I think Real Madrid have to be considered the overwhelming favorites. I think that currently on from a squad building view, I think while there's a good core at Barca with uh, you know Petri Gavi and potentially Ansu Fati up, up front and you know even Frankie de Jong is not that old. I just see that the Real Madrid looks a whole lot better and a whole lot better set up for the future. That's my personal feeling. But let's go outside of uh, the big the top two who will play for the championship. Can Atleti join them? Well, first of all, can you get rid of Joao Felice? That, I think, is the, the biggest, biggest question right there. Um, but also, uh, can you build on the success? I mean, Atleti were the best team in the spring. There's no doubt about that. And if they can keep it up, I think they really have something going. They also got some really nice signings from the Premier League in uh, in defense with Suyunchi and Aspilicueta, which might do something. 
Uh, Real Sociedad was the fourth best team uh, last season, uh, mostly because Sevilla were having such a big fall off. Um, they're losing David Silva to retirement. They're losing Serloth. However, they get Andre Silva in, you know, the guy that played at Milan, Sevilla, Frankfurt and Leipzig. Uh, if Andre Silva can hit, I think Real Sociedad will probably have a relatively secure fourth place finish in them. Sevilla is really, really hard to predict at this moment because, you know, there is they are in financial troubles. They have this fire sale, but this was a team that won the Europa League and they definitely will not be as bad as they were last season. Uh, similarly, uh, Villarreal have been losing quite a few players. Uh, thank you for Chukwese. I hope at least as a Milan fan. Uh, and same thing goes for Betis, where Betis, I think you always have to think they are reaching. Um, will it fall off or can they hit the next level? And then you have the other two uh, good surprises last time, time, time around uh, with Osasuna. And maybe not a bad surprise was Bilbao, who probably should be there, but I think they're not quite at, at, at that level. So I would say up until Betis, we have the European spots unless something crazy happens. So we have the two, the, the big two with Atletico and Real Sociedad. I think those will be the top four. And Sevilla, Villarreal, Betis, potential Bilbao and also Suno for the European spots. The rest is more or less relegation in implications. I am a little bit worried for Rayo uh, losing their coach to Bournemouth um, might hinder them a little bit. However, they might have a good enough squad, but definitely the three promoted sides in Granada, Alaves and Las, especially Las Palmas. We're looking at teams that everyone will have uh, marked for relegation, but same thing goes probably for Almeria and Cadiz and Cadiz have been holding themselves up there. Uh, interesting will be Getafe and then of course the biggest question is what will Valencia do huge club but if you look at the squad again fire sale it was a fire sale I'm afraid that Valencia will face another relegation struggle uh, it could also hit uh, Celta de Vigo which is as you know kind of one of my uh, a team that I have a soft spot for um, but I actually the other team that I think could again do some trouble like Rayo has been doing is Girona and so we have talked about all of these teams let's see how my model again the ratings are based on the club ELO rating and the pre-season odds for the uh, league winner and here you go Real Madrid are the winners but only a little bit ahead of Barca but it's enough to say that they are in first place again uh, take it with a pinch of salt uh, preseason also probably will expect that Kylian Mbappe is there as I said if he's not there I can see this a much tighter race with advantage Barcelona if Kylian goes to Real Madrid Real Madrid are the fave favorites and usually Real Madrid after a bad season where they only won the cup usually bounce back well so let's see that you see also three and four Sevilla Villarreal around the running out and you know one Europa League spot will go to the cup winner and if it's one of the top top four then it goes of course uh, to the league so uh, very much a familiar top seven on the bottom the three promoted teams with Granada having the best shot of staying in Almeria and Cadiz just hanging in there just like Rayo so let's see how this will go the new season starts with Almeria against Rayo, so already a relegation duel in there. Then a big name uh, matchup of the two disappointments of last season with Sevilla against Valencia, Rasso Dutch against Girona. That could be a fun one uh, if everything holds an island duel with Las Palmas against Mallorca. And then a traditional duel to start it off with Bilbao against the Real Madrid, a Real Madrid team that plays the first few fixtures, not at the Bernabeu because there's some remodeling still to, to be done. I guess the pitch has to be uh, prepared, which is just uh, amazingly crazy what they're doing there. Uh, Champions Barca have to start at Getafe. Not an easy start. Uh, we have another relegation duel with Cadiz against uh, Alaves. A Villarreal against Betis. Sounds like an interesting one. Uh, also, color-wise, could, could be interesting. Uh, Atletis uh, is on Monday evening late on against Granada. We also see the second round where I think the standout fixture uh, is Rapetis against Atleti. So, yeah, that's it from me for the preview for La Liga. Let me know who you think will win uh, La Liga this, 
This time around on my soccer universe, I will give you regular updates. I may drop Portugal for uh, these videos, so I will let them fly solo and add Portugal in a more of a European roundup somewhere else, or just with posts, unless something is. But I will definitely focus uh, probably more on La Liga there. I think it is an interesting season. Uh, the only thing that bugs me is that it will still be against Barcelona, against Real Madrid, but maybe Atleti can get in there. It would be fun if there would be a fourth team joining. It would be good for the league. A league that honestly has been losing a little bit of ground as of late. I think the financial troubles are too big and hamper them a little bit too much. But still brilliant stuff could happen there. Any case, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And I will talk to you soon about more La Liga. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!